Two minutes. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Dr. Roland Roberts. We'll be going live here in just a few minutes to a million people all over the world. And uh, so we're really excited that, uh, that we're able to speak into the lives of so many people. And so we're just getting started here in the studio. We'll be going live uh, here in just a moment. I've got a, a several guests that will be on today, and we're going to be talking about a number of companies. And I'm going to really in an entertaining way, talk about the climate of business today. And of course, we may get into some remarks on the U.S.-China trade war, and there's a way to make business fun. I love entrepreneurship. I love creating and innovating. And so that's exactly what we're going to be, be focusing on today. Uh, we've got, we'll have some entrepreneurs call in, and we'll talk about their businesses. And if you've got any questions, please give us a call as well at 407-916-5400. One minute. All right, very good. Thanks, Tom. Are we hot, Tom? Oh, we are. Thanks. Welcome to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio with America's CEO and host, Dr. Roland Roberts where he takes your calls live to help you start businesses, turns companies around, and goes to the mat in boardroom battles. Entrepreneurs, this show is for you. Dealing with the stress of payroll, struggling with time management, losing it balancing family and work, wondering how to get more customers. You are about to get your questions answered. Bringing to you now, America's CEO and former CEO of the Hoverboard Company, Here's Dr. Roland Roberts. Welcome to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Roland Roberts, and I'm taking your calls, questions, and opinions on all things entrepreneurship every Thursday at noon Eastern Time. 407-916-5400 is the number to call. 407-916-5400. Tell me about your product, service, business. It's a great way to, to promote it and get it in front of a lot of people and us just see if we can take it to, another uh, to a whole other level. Uh, so you can also send me your questions at CourageousRadio.com. And uh, or at any time, actually, on Facebook at Courageous Media. Just search for at Courageous Media on Facebook and uh, or send us an email office at Courageous Experience dot com. And uh, you can watch this show live by going to Courageous Radio dot com. There's a watch live button. And that's always fun and entertaining for you. And of course, during commercials, we'll, we'll talk and share and laugh and you can ask uh, questions. And especially uh, I get into a lot of interesting conversations sometimes in the studio uh, that you uh, would would gain a lot of value, actually, and insight because it's just really casual. It's off air, and uh, you may get exactly what you need for your life or for your business uh, during that time. So watch us live whenever you can, CourageousRadio.com. And also, if you're ever in the Orlando area, you're welcome to join this a small in-studio audience. Uh, that's always fun as well. All right, now for my take on this week's top business news. Bloomberg has invited me to keynote their Business Week conference in Shanghai, China, December 6th and 7th. Uh, I'm also honored to fly to Beijing in just over a week to address China's Congress and 4,000 business leaders, government and business leaders there in Tiananmen Square at the Great Hall of the People. And uh, one of the things we'll be talking about is the U.S.-China trade war and kind of the influence on that and uh, how it's affected both Chinese businesses and businesses around the world and entrepreneurs the world over. Uh, so I do have one or two sponsorship opportunities available as well. If you've got a product or service that you want me to introduce there or you've been trying to get into China, and, you know, it's very expensive. It takes a lot of time. But if you've got a product or service that you think would really serve that market or those people, let me know. Send us an email at office at courageousexperience.com, and I will be happy to, uh, to talk with you about how we can do that. Uh, we just want to serve people and, you know, spending $10,000 to get in front of that kind of an audience or what have you. Uh, you know, it's just a, it's something that money can't buy. And in business, you have to understand the role of favor and especially when it's stages and platforms and audiences 
that uh, that that no amount of money can 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 buy your way there. So it's a it's a unique opportunity. I'll be passing out uh, a flyer with some information on it while I'm there, and uh, you could be on one side of it. So once again, if you have interest there, email me at office at courageousexperience.com. But looking forward to being in Beijing and Shanghai and getting to see the Great Wall of China and, of course, the Forbidden City and just all of the history, the rich history in Beijing, and also promoting ethical entrepreneurship around the world. This has been an extraordinary election cycle, and uh, I know we probably all have election fatigue, but regardless of whether you were cheering or crying on Wednesday, uh, I want to give a special shout out to my dad who won his Senate race in West Virginia. So congratulations to my dad. If you follow me on social media, you can see that I was a proud son. Uh, I was a proud son a long time before this because he's been my best friend. And, uh, and I'm so thankful for the wisdom that, that he's poured into me over the years. He's been with me through thick and thin. Uh, he's been through the pain. He's been through the ups, the downs, the heartbreaks, the heartaches, and just every the suffering. And um, and he's been right there. So I'm so thankful. He worked hard. And he loves people. And uh, so I'm just thrilled for, for him and want to send him a huge congratulations. Bitcoin. Bitcoin turned 10 this past week. Uh, and so I find it very interesting. What I want to sh- what I want to tell you about Bitcoin that you may not have known is Bitcoin did, w- did not start off to be an investment vehicle. It started off to be a currency platform, just as what bl- blockchain, you know, the whole concept is. And so the whole idea was that it was supposed to be like a PayPal or something like that. And of course, it turned into uh, really a- an investment. And so people invest in cryptocurrency uh, as opposed to most people. Obviously, banks have their own crypto. Uh, they're exchanging. They're not literally sending $100 bills whenever you make a transaction uh, to and from your account or from one bank to another bank. You know, they're not writing checks and and, and necessarily uh, wiring money. There's a whole blockchain technology that kind of governs and oversees a lot of that. Uh, But anyway, Bitcoin, happy birthday to you. Uh, But the principle that I hope my audience takes away is that what you create the product for may not be how people use it. And you need to be okay with that as an entrepreneur. Uh, I remember whenever I was CEO of the hoverboard company, they told uh, the, the the inventor was really upset because he had 32 other inventions. He had 33 patents. And so I'm looking at these different products and he d- really did not like the hoverboard. He, he said it was one of his worst inventions. And I'm thinking to myself, how in the, I, I, and how in the world is that possible? Uh, and, and the truth is, and what I told him and what I told the staff is your best invention is the one people will use. So you have to be able to get out past your pride. You got to get past your ego and recognize that, uh, that, that your, the, the, your greatest invention is the one people will use. Now, I also understand where he's coming from, because if people ask me what my greatest accomplishment or achievement or the company that was the, the most successful, you would have to, most people would say, well, the hoverboard became a household name. It's global. You know, it was the best selling product of 2015 consumer product. I mean, it's unreal the accolades that that product achieved. However, that was not the most difficult company I ever turned around or led. There was another company that the mountain was much steeper to climb. That The challenge I had to overcome to make that company successful required everything in me. It required every ounce of energy, every ounce of brain power, uh, every idea I'd ever had. It required all of these things. And so I, I had to give it everything and so I personally am way more enthused by that accomplishment than I am by, by some of the other companies that, that people like to, to talk about. So anyway, happy birthday, Bitcoin. Apple is launching a new TV subscription service in 100 countries. Now, Apple TV has languished for years, and, uh, but rumors have always persisted that they were trying to do to TV what they did to the music industry. And of course, as you know, in the early 2000s, they completely revolutionized the music industry. We do not have record stores. We do not have CD stores. And it's not because CDs were out and and, and it's the introduction of the iPod, but it was more than the device and hardware. It was the, uh, it was iTunes. It was the store. It was the digital. And of course, now we're way past that with Pandora and uh, Apple Music and Amazon Music and so forth. So, where you don't even buy the song, I can. Uh, it's the subscription service that's paying. So it's an entirely new business model. Uh, but Apple is going to uh, do that to the TV industry. I've been waiting for it for a long time. I think networks are, and the idea of even cable is so archaic, it blows my mind. Uh, I want to see the cable companies 
really go out of business because they're the record, record stores of yesterday. Uh, and, and I want to see the smart TVs kind of take over. And uh, of course, the cable companies won't go away entirely because they'll keep selling the internet and uh, uh, the data packages and so forth. But their cable and archaic phone products are, uh, can go to the graveyard. I'll be fine with that. I told you about Netflix doing great at growing the subscriptions and doing bad at making a profit. Profit being the key word in business, not revenue. I would actually say that purpose is the key word in business, not profit. But after purpose, then comes profit, then comes revenue. But uh, they added $2 billion more in debt last week. And I don't know why investors are still okay with that. But uh, the, the debt is going to be an issue. Yes, the subscri subscribers are going up. But the only reason a company would incur $2 billion worth of debt in, in bonds and so forth is not to just keep going after more subscriptions. It's to increase valuation. So Netflix, I know you're getting ready to do something. You're either going to take it private or you're going to sell it to a private equity firm. You're, you're about to make some kind of a move because it's the only reason in the world you do it. It's also the only reason why your major investors would be okay with it. So looking forward to seeing what happens there. Alexa and Siri are going head to head. They probably need to come on the boardroom battles because they are just going out of Amazon and Qualcomm partnered up to put Alexa into every, into their wireless headphones, in all the wireless headphones. You may recall that's how IB or Microsoft won over Apple for the first 15 years was the, the deal that they made, actually more like the first 20 years because of the deal they made with IBM. So literally Alexa is taking on Siri in a big, big way right now. Uh, and so very similar uh, strategy. Fun fact, over $9 billion was spent on Halloween last week. It's a big, big business. So is the fireworks business, if you're willing to work 18 hours a day. Coinbase was valued at $9 billion after raising $300 million. It's the main cryptocurrency provider. You're listening to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio with Dr. Roland Roberts. I'll be right back after this word from my sponsors. All right, hope you're enjoying this edition of Courageous Entrepreneur Radio. We have a, uh, a few minutes for a break here, and, uh, and then we'll be going live. And uh, I'm really excited. I've got the guy I'm going to uh, have on next is uh, actually one of, is, is one of my sponsors. He's my financial, one of my financial advisors and uh, certainly has, has, has guided in a number of areas, and we've worked on some unique things together. So, uh, you know, entrepreneurs are really, really bad at handling money usually. They're great at ideas but they're not good at handling money. In fact, uh, most of their small businesses are small because they don't have good books. So the better they are at keeping books, the, 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 you know, they'd make better decisions because they'd see where they are. And usually they don't want to see where they are. It's like, let me keep my head in the sand on that front. Let me just keep innovating, creating, moving forward. So uh, he's going to be on to talk about that. And, uh, and then I, I know we also have um, some college entrepreneurs that are going to be calling in with some unique businesses that they're doing. And so I'm excited to, uh, to visit with them today as well. And I've got a few more announcements that I'm going to be making here at the end. Uh, so stick with me because it's going to be a great, a great show. You'll learn so much. Um, I've, uh, the hot list and hit list this week is, uh, is, is pretty heavy. And then also uh, the boardroom battles. Uh, we're going to we're going to work on a couple of companies that are the ones that, uh, you know, you may not have thought of in a while. That's why they need help. So but they're big brands. It was 22 brands that were supposed to die in uh, in 2018. How long do we have? Yeah. Two minutes. Nick and John are on two different lines. OK. And, and your, um, where are we here? Okay, so they're both on. Yeah. And how long do we have left? Um, coming up on one minute. Very good, thanks. But give us a call if you've got questions, 407-916-5400. Uh, also, you'll be able to, on. I don't know if you follow my podcast on iTunes. It's on a, a bunch of other uh, networks or podcast stations as well, but... Uh, every week, the actual produced version gets uploaded to the, all the podcasts. So if you want to hear it with the commercials and ver a very seamless, smooth uh, pro program like a traditional podcast, then uh, then definitely subscribe to the to the uh, to the iTunes podcast. Just look for Courageous Entrepreneur Radio or Courageous Dr. Roland Roberts, and you'll be able to find us. Going live here in a second.
Welcome back to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Roland Roberts. I'm taking your calls live every Thursday at noon Eastern time, 407-916-5400. 407-916-5400. If you have a question about your product, service, business, you're thinking about being an entrepreneur, you want to be an entrepreneur, give us a call. We'll talk about it. If you're thinking about starting a business or just want to grow, just give me a call. I'm really excited to have a guest on the on the line with me today, Nick McCarthy. He's a great friend. He's also a finan- my financial advisor and has helped with uh, insurance products and financial services and so forth. Uh, he and uh, New York Life are one of the sponsors of Courageous Entrepreneur Radio. So, Nick, thank you so much for joining us. Welcome. Well, thank you. It's uh, I'm humbled to be on the show and, and look forward to uh, chatting it up and talking about business. Well, you know, one of the reasons why you and I connected, uh, which I think it probably took a, a year or two of, of just friendship and relationship before we were able to move forward with any kind of, of, of business. Uh, talk to me about the role of relationship in business. Like how, and especially in this industry, uh, it, it's a, it's, it's almost everything, isn't it? It, it really is. It's uh, without it, it, it's hard for it to work. You just become a transactional sales guy. And, and really regardless of your product, you kind of have that choice of who you want to be. And sometimes transactional matters, but in financial advising, you really got to trust the person you're with. Yes. And I would say whether it's somebody who's in year one of their career uh, or year 40 of their career, trust is everything. Because if they're with a good company, they're going to have experts, they're going to have support, and they're going to have help. You have to know the person you're working with and be sure you can trust them with your money. Right. And, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs aren't good with money. Just naturally, uh, they, they don't, they're not focused on the products and services that um, the you know other people are is kind of what helps make them make them successful. I remember you know some of uh, some of my uh, higher level friends that you know whenever we were talking that did not have basic insurance products or you know basic protection or uh, you know it's just a bunch of cash sitting in the bank somewhere. Yeah, it's uh, it's funny. There's the two kinds of entrepreneurs: those just getting started that are you know probably eating ramen noodles, and uh, those have made it and probably have big cash reserves. And for the new guys. Uh, they're not, you know, they don't hedge their bet well. Uh, they don't plan for the unexpected. They're really just all in, jumping off a cliff, hoping they find that parachute on the way down. Um, you know, and it's my job at the cliff to say, hey, you can jump, but here's a parachute just in case, you know, right. so we hedge that bet a little bit. Uh, and then for those that are good at what they do, I'll tell you, they're they're good at making money, uh, but they're equally as good at spending it. <laughs> um, you know, and they love to buy the toys and stuff like that. And my, my advice usually is, you know, invest in yourself. Well, mm. invest in your, invest in your faith, invest what you believe in the most first, mm-hmm. uh, but then invest in yourself, take an extra 10, 15, 20%, depending on how good you're doing and just put it aside, you know, make sure you're beating inflation, make sure that you're doing all right, or make sure you're doing well in the market when you're on an upturn. So, you know, you're, you're talking about protection, growth, just kind of a, a high level approach really to it. But you know, it's very. You have a very similar philosophy. I think it's one of the reasons why why our relationship works so well. Because in what I do, I have to be. I want to be the fence at the top of the hill to keep you from falling off the cliff. But yet, I'm also an ambulance at the bottom. You know, yeah. uh, so yeah. the people who are already off the cliff and they come to us and say, "Look, I need help." You know, I've lost it. And so, um, is there a, a an ideal client profile, or is it just wherever you are, you need to start? Just start where you are with something. Clean it up. I, Even if you don't have something, then you need a plan to have something. You know, for, from a client standpoint, I, I would say the latter. It's, you know, wherever you are in the process, if you haven't talked with somebody, um, talk to them. You know, you, you may be doing everything great, and, and if nothing else, the conversation is you're doing great, and, and have that assurance and, and feel good about yourself when you go to sleep at night. Uh, but certainly if there are things that could be better, uh, you have that opportunity to start turning it around. I mean, you can you can always turn it around no matter where you're at, no matter how bad it is. There's always an opportunity to get back on the right path and start building. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, for entrepreneurs, a lot of times it, people are nervous or they are scared or, you know, the first thing I hear is, well, I don't have enough. And, and it, I've heard that from people with a few hundred thousand dollars in the bank and they're like, well, I don't really have anything. And and, and, I, and maybe it would be different if the person had a hundred dollars in the bank. But uh, but literally, people with uh, you know with larger sums will sit there and say, "Well, I don't really have much to to work with." What do you say? Yeah, you know, I think sometimes people, especially if they've never had it, if they didn't grow up with it, um, they see that number in the bank and, and letting it go is sort of an odd feeling. They don't realize that 
uh, different accounts doesn't mean it's not accessible. Um, doesn't uh-huh. mean that it can't be doing things for you. Hey, this is getting you know, personal now. This, this is really personal. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Because <laughs> no, you're you're you keep going because you're you're hitting the nail on the head. It's exactly what I struggle with. Keep going. It, yeah, it's it's. I think there's misconceptions that if you work with somebody and and you choose to move forward with a plan like you're you're giving into a sale or something, and and you shouldn't be if if you trust the person. Yeah. And you've gotten to know the advisor that you're working with, and and really any kind of uh, service relationship like I'm in, and as far as the industry, if you trust the person you're working with, just like you would your banker, I mean, you go up to a teller you barely know, and you deposit mm-hmm. money all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm not sure how that would be any different working with an advisor as long as they're with a reputable company. Right. So it, it's just moving all that money from one basket to another, or simply splitting it up, working towards your goals. A lot of people invest in retirement funds and different things, or they get guaranteed interest rates from CDs or annuities. Uh, and I always ask them, well, why that? And they say, well, it's giving me this interest rate. I'm like, well, that's great. You're focused on the number, but why is that your number? And is that going to achieve your goal 30 years from now? Why that number? Mm-hmm. Uh, and usually that means they've sat with somebody and they've sold them uh, interest rate, uh, and that's transactional sales, but nobody's taking the time to sit down and figure out, you know, what are the goals? That's, that's it. always my first question. What are your goals? And then we can start to work backwards from there. Yeah, that's what really drove me nuts or drives me nuts really about the financial services industry is usually when you sit down with, with most of them, they're trying to sell you on, on, on what's going to get them. At least it feels like what the commission or whatever product of the month is being pushed or, you know, mm-hmm. it, it's they're not interested in getting to know the person or getting to know me, getting to know what I'm trying to do. And what I'm comfortable with, not comfortable with, all of those things, and that's what I—that's uh, what I really appreciated about about you and and our relationship. So, uh, and, and that took a long time because I needed to f- feel like I had been heard, like I had been understood, like uh, like you knew my fears as it related to to these things. And I'm not trying to hit maybe some massive home runs or. Uh, or maybe I, I, you know, just what the different goals are uh, for different amounts and in and in different places. Like you said, I'm willing to w- risk this amount. I'm, I've got to secure this amount. I need. It's more important to me to have a consistent monthly, uh, you know, annuity uh, amount coming in every month or whatever, as opposed to, mm-hmm. um, you know, whatever down the road. Uh, and then there's also other products that we plan for that produce, you know, income 20, 30 years from now monthly. So whatever it is, uh, how can people reach you? Well, uh, you can reach me. I've got a new website up. I'm still tinkering with it some, but it is live. You can reach me at Nick J. McCarthy. That's Nick with the K, uh, dot com. Uh, so Nick J. McCarthy dot com. Awesome. They can also uh, that, go to uh, courageous dot com. You'll see the New York Life button right there. And if you mm-hmm. click on that, it'll take them directly to your website. Nick, thanks so Even much better. for being on Courageous Entrepreneur Radio today. You're listening to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio with Dr. Roland Roberts. I'll be right back with the business hot list and hit list after these messages. All right, we are. Uh, that was that was a great segment. That was hopefully that was uh, beneficial to you on fin- what's that on financial uh, investments and planning and insurance products and things like that. So uh, Nick is uh, is a, is a great friend. Once again, you can go to uh, courageousradio.com and click on New York Life under my sponsors, and it'll take you directly to him. Uh, just set up a call, talk with him. Uh, he'll he'll just get to know you in what you're trying to do. And I'm telling you the biggest misnomer is I've got to have something. I've got to have a bunch of money to invest or things like that. I'm telling you, if you've got, you know, probably 60, 70, 80 bucks a month, he can start taking it and doing something with it. So, so don't be afraid. Don't let pride keep you from, uh, from reaching out for sure. And, um, all right. minutes we're back in two back in two minutes and how long is this segment
All right. Welcome back to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Roland Roberts. I'm taking your calls live every Thursday at noon, Eastern Time, 407-916-5400 to help you start or grow your businesses. We have John on the line. John, welcome to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio. Thank you for having me. Now, tell, tell us uh, where, where you're from and what you do, what business you have. Well, I'm originally from Seattle, Washington. Uh, I just moved over to Liberty University in Virginia uh, to study entrepreneurship <laughs> and international business. Yeah, go LU. And I started a business a year and a half ago called Stylo Inc., Inc. with a K. Uh, I have a website called Stylo, S T Y L O dash Inc. I N K dot com, where I hand make exotic wood and acrylic pens to put myself through college while also giving other high school and college students opportunities to get into the business world, learn the skills they need to be professional, such as taking them to networking events with me, how to look someone in the eye, how to shake their hand, and uh, really just trying to help out uh, this new generation into becoming leaders of tomorrow. Okay, that's, that's fantastic. So you, you, there's a lot to unpack there. So you've got, you've got the, the exotic pen business, custom handmade pens. Uh, very nice. And um, so what, what is the, the, the goal? It's not, I mean, I heard purpose in there as well. So yeah. you, you're trying to, you know, help other people with eye contact and help them in business. T tell me more about the purpose and then we'll move into the product. Okay. Well, the purpose uh, when starting my business was I was trying to find a way to put myself through school. I actually uh, grew up in a very dysfunctional home where constantly going to food banks every Wednesday and moving around. And uh, my parents aren't actually able to help me with going to college. Mm -hmm. And so I knew that I wanted to be able to put myself in an atmosphere where I can uh, grow, learn as much as I can foundationally uh, in terms of business while also uh, earning a doctorate. So that way when I'm public speaking, I can have more of an impact in other people's lives. So the purpose of my business is to not only put myself through college uh, and being able to be financially stable, but also giving opportunities to other students so they can learn and grow as well. What, what's the opportunity for other students? Is, is it, do they, do you uh, hire them? Or are they commissioned salespeople, if you will, if they sell pens or what, mm -hmm. how does that work? So right now I have about eight interns here at the college. Uh, multiple are work, of them are working under CSER, which is a community service requirement here at the college for every semester. Okay. What I do is I give, uh, so I give them work that they can put on a resume, such as inventory management, uh, networking, ca customer outreach, uh, website development. So they, w they are working for free under me, but I'm giving them opportunities to learn in their uh, field of study. Yeah. So for example, uh, one person is wanting to go into announcing and journalism. So I'm helping him uh, learn how to create a blog. So, and another person's going into web design and marketing. So I'm having them run my social media marketing. Mm, uh, I love it. Yeah, yeah that's, fan that's fantastic. What, what you're hearing, what, or one of the things I'm hearing is that you've already learned that you can't do it by yourself. It's one of the biggest problems mis yeah. and mistakes entrepreneurs make is they keep thinking they can, they, that, that they're an island and that they have to do everything. And the, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the sooner they can learn that, you know, bring on other people use the team, leverage the team, uh, mm -hmm. let them all, you know, associate with this purpose that it's not just about the pin. Now I do want to talk about the product. So why pins? Like how did that start? Was it, how did you even get into that? So uh, about five years ago, my dad had showed me how to make pens using a lathe and 
I really found a passion of turning nothing into something, just taking a block of wood and uh, turning it into a really nice handmade pen. And I, I believe that Christmas, my mom bought me a lathe so that uh, she wouldn't have to ever buy Christmas presents for anyone anymore. And I just make them all. So <laughs> kind of saw what she was doing there. But uh, this about a year and a half ago, I was trying to go to D.C. with my cousins for vacation. I had no spending money and I had uh, a couple pens on me. So I decided to do what uh, most people did in sixth and seventh grade with their cookie dough and magazine sales. I went door to door, sold all of them within an hour and thought this would be a great way to save money for college. The reason why I really dug into pens is because it's kind of a lost art uh, being able yeah. to write a handwritten note. Most people turn towards emails and electronics, which are efficient in some ways, but they don't leave as much of a memorable impact. Uh, you've probably um, noticed that when you get uh, mail nowadays, a handwritten letter carries way more weight mm -hmm. than an email. So uh, I'm trying to bring that back as, among both a younger generation, but also towards uh, high up individuals, CEOs, so they have a handmade pen that can act as a conversation piece. I love it. Meeting and uh, so forth. Yeah. You know, I, I write uh, thank you notes, handwritten thank you notes fr very frequently. Uh, and uh, I, I, pens are important to me. They're very important. Uh, and, 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 you know, they, they weren't near as important to me as they should have been early on. But the more mm -hmm. I understood relationship, the more I understood success, the more I understood what that meant uh, and how to, how to get there, uh, the more important my pens became to me. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the I remember the first time I, I spent, you know, a dollar amount that had a comma in it on a pen. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And uh, um, I, I'll tell you one trick that my poor man little brain did was I had it engraved with my name so that I couldn't sell it if, if I got in a pickle uh, down the road. Yep. Because, you know, I'd started businesses before where, you know, I have to sell the motorcycle. I got to sell the plane. You got to sell this or that, you know, to, to you got to sell something to, to, to add or to grow. And I thought, no, not the pen. You can, you can take a lot of things, but you can't take the pen. And, um, and so I think it's critical to understand those kind of things. So that's fantastic. Uh, so in terms of, in terms of growth, what, wh what's the, what's the growth model and strategy? Right now, my strategy is to go more online, especially since I am putting myself through school at the moment, taking a full load, also helping out uh, with the college uh, here at the Center of Entrepreneurship. As I talked to you before about creating a uh, program for high school students to learn how to um, become entrepreneurs and develop a mindset that really promotes uh, uh, God in the uh, workplace, but mm -hmm. also in uh, creating new ideas and products that will help the economy. So uh, I've been very busy. And with that in mind, I'm trying to limit the time I go to networking events and growing online. So upping my social media, marketing strategies, and that's what I'm using the interns for at the college right now so I can grow online. Yeah, love it. I, I, so online sales. And I love what you said too, limiting the networking time. Uh, so many people get caught up into going to networking events night after night after night, especially in the largest uh uh, you know, in larger cities, there's so many networking events and you have to be very intentional about where you are, the energy that oh, you're right. putting forth. It's really energy management. And so I, I love that you're, that you're focused on that. We only have a few more minutes left in this segment. I want to get, uh, did we have a, 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 I want you to share the web address again for our listeners to be able to go there. And then I, and I want to make sure we get any other um, entrepreneurs on with you. Okay. Sounds good. Well, my website is stylo S T Y L O dash Inc. I N K dot com. Again, stylo dash Inc. Dot com. I actually do have a uh, discount going on right now for anyone listening. It's uh 25% off your purchase. It's uh C E radio, all caps, 25. Again, that's C E radio, 25, all caps. And that will give you uh 25% off your first purchase here at stylo Inc. Man, that's amazing. You are Amazing, John. I mean, just how you think and how you process. You are an entrepreneur. You're, you're highly successful and mainly not just because of the business sense, but because of the kingdom focus that you have. And I really appreciate that. It's one of the things I appreciate most about you and, uh, and especially that, that you even just share that and, and promote that. So once again, thanks for being on Courageous Entrepreneur Radio and uh, love you. what you're doing. Thank you for serving in this way. Uh, who, who else do we have on? So I me? also have Josh here and I'll hand the phone over to him. All right, very good. Josh, welcome to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio. Tell us uh, what so you do. How are you doing today? Good. How are you? I'm doing fine. Thank you. So tell us what your business is and what your idea or what you're trying to do. 
Yes, sir. So uh, I'm actually a senior here at Liberty University. I'm studying finance currently. Um, and I, uh, freshman year, I actually had an idea and I realized just how much I hated doing laundry, right? So I feel like it's <laughs> something that many, many people can relate to, you know, especially college males, you know, I can imagine if there's any, uh, college students listening right now that they probably have a pile of laundry right next to them in their room. Um, so I realized that it was a problem and, uh, I thought that maybe starting up a laundry service could potentially solve the problem. So, you know, four years later, I finally actually did something about it. So, uh, uh, just recently, about eight weeks ago, I started working on the idea of creating a laundry service. And um, so I, I, the, the name of it is Clean. So it's Clean Laundry Service. We're currently servicing um, students at Liberty University and people in the surrounding area. So we, we're full service. So we do pick up and delivery and uh, wash, dry, fold. And we have like a very uh, – we have a system of curated steps that ensures that every time you get the same results. And um, we're very proud of what we've, what we've accomplished in a short amount of time. Now – that, that's amazing. Congratulations first. Um, Thank you. I, I, I love it. It's profitable. I love service businesses for college students. I love service businesses for broke entrepreneurs. I love service <laughs> businesses because they are cash flow uh, quickly. Yeah, you know, yeah, uh, a lot of people have these ideas where, you know, it requires all this capital and they're going to put together the business plans and raise the funds. And now why don't you just, you know, go buy the cleaning products and go get to work and uh, buy exactly. the lawnmower and go start mowing, some, you know, some, some, some grass and, uh, and you'll start having some cash come in. So I, I love what you're doing. I want to under, good, drill down. We only have a few seconds left, uh, and then we'll, okay. I'll pick you back up coming up after the break. But I, I want to know, uh, do, you, uh, do you outsource this? How, do you, how are you doing that? Actually, let's cover that as soon as we come back from the break. You're listening to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio with Dr. Roland Roberts. I'll be right back after this short commercial break. I'll tangle up on the cords. And yes, <laughs> mow that grass, make that cash. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'm going to quote you, Amanda. I'm going to quote you. I love that. The end of the pen. Yep. Nick, thanks for being on the call today. You're amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, and thanks for understanding, like just, just understanding the struggles of an entrepreneur and kind of the mindset, you know, and especially from my perspective, coming from, from not much, uh, you know, or humble beginnings, it means a lot. It, it, it means a whole lot. So two minutes. We still have Josh. Good, good. Okay. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to do a, I'm going to see here. I'm going to do a hard uh, drop starting at four minutes uh, with what I with some closing things that I need to share. So um, you just start counting me down at least from there. But you know, probably halfway through this segment, kind of. Okay, with four minutes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give you five. I'll give you five. Then I'll give you four. Perfect. Thanks. <laughs> Coming up in one minute. This is the 12 minutes. Second. One minute, 12 minutes. Thank you.
Welcome back to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Roland Roberts. I'm taking your calls live every Thursday at noon Eastern Time, 407-916-5400. We have Josh on the line. He's a student at uh, Liberty University in Lynchburg, Virginia. He's an entrepreneur there. He has started a laundry business, full service, wash, dry, fold. Josh, welcome to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio. I'm wondering, here's my question. Uh, do you, when, when you pick up the laundry, are you taking it somewhere and doing it? Or do you have other people, you know, doing it or what's going on there? Yes, sir. So currently we're still small enough where um, I'm just doing the laundry myself to right. uh, cut costs and yep. stay very lean. Um, but we do have different scale plans that we're developing. And we're still in the process of developing these plans. But uh, it, it definitely involves hiring some employees. Uh, right now I'm looking at hiring Liberty students just mm -hmm. to give back to the community a little bit and, uh, you know, offer students a safe work environment. Um, so I'm going to be hiring Liberty students. I'm also planning on uh, processing a lot of the orders on campus at, the, uh, at some of the facilities that are already in place. So okay. therefore, it keeps my costs down, and it also keeps the cash flow inside of the community right. uh, that I love. And it allows the Liberty students to be able to go to work, make a living without needing transportation as well, which I think is a huge benefit. Yeah, on campus, on campus employment is critical. And it, like you said, you're keeping it in the ecosystem. So what, what are some exactly. of the differentiating factors that you have? Uh, is, it, is it with the detergent? I mean, uh, I mean, obviously you're selling convenience. Is there any, are there any other differentiating factors that you're really focusing on? Yeah, so I'm actually uh, right now in the process of developing my own detergent. And uh, I've already created the first you know, the first iteration of that. And it's, um, and this is a true story. So I actually created this detergent and I have a shirt that's had a stain in it for years. And I used, I was testing the detergent, used it one time and the stain was completely gone. So I think I might've found something really interesting here. Yeah. Um, so I'm currently not using that detergent to process my orders just because I want to make sure it's thoroughly tested. It isn't going to damage the clothing before I start using it. Right. But, uh, so that is one factor that differentiates and also the convenience is the main key. Uh, but I would say that the main reason that that people are paying for this service is the process. I've developed a very, very thorough, thought-out process. It thinks of every single possible thing that could happen, such as, you know, uh, going through every pocket. You know, something small like a highlighter could end up ruining an entire load of clothing. Right. So that's very important, and we, we spend extra time to ensure that every, every time we use the same process. You know, it's amazing how many businesses would succeed if they just cared, and that's be their differentiating factor as well because most of them don't. And I can't tell you the times I've gotten pants back, you know, and a piece of gum was in my, still in my pocket or something, you know, and yes, somehow it just, uh, my, my, my yeah. pocket just molded together. In fact, that happened recently and it was, you know, a couple hundred dollar pair of pants or something. And, and so I'm like, hey, good it, night. It, it, it ruins my pants. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I love it. Uh, quick question for you uh, before we run. Uh, what is the greatest challenge uh, to your growth right now? I mean, is it, is it, is it, you know, time? Is it bandwidth? Is it? Pickups, drop-offs, the, doing the you know fulfilling the service. What's the biggest you know struggle or, or, or yeah, it, with growth? I, I think the biggest struggle is going to be um, once we find scale, once we have a lot of customers and we're doing high volume number of loads. Um, just managing that scale, managing the I think bandwidth is a good way to put it. Uh, just all the just all the all the orders that we're going to have to push through our process and being able to ensure the quality every time. That's going to be one of the biggest hurdles. And that's something that I'm trying to plan through now to be ready for it when it comes. Right. Logistics, keeping each other, each customer's order separate, but being able to do multiple at the same time and, you know, exactly. pick up delivery, drop off, you know, hauling this stuff around campus. And, and Hey, what, one last thing I want to give you and encourage you is, is get, get branded bags as soon as, you, as soon as possible. I'm sure somebody even listening yes, may sir. want to invest in the, but, but somehow get your brand out so that when they see, you know, 30 of your green or blue or purple or whatever color bag, red <laughs> for Liberty, you know, whatever yeah. color bags you've got going, you know, they're going to be like, you know, it's kind of like Harry's or the Dollar Shave Club or some of these, you know, uh, subscription programs where it's like, well, if I'm not on it, then why not? Everybody else is. So if you yeah, brand yeah, that laundry cool. service, you will crush it faster. Okay. Awesome. I appreciate that advice. That's something I've been looking into and I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm trying it. to figure it's out. It's one of the best ways you can do. That's more important. And it's not more, it's as important as your website for them to be able to, uh, you know, schedule pickups, drop offs, uh, drop offs and, uh -huh. and, 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 and order your subscription or order your model, which by the way, I would have it on subscription. I would not charge just one time. I'd say we want to come, we come by just like a trash valet. We're your laundry valet. We come by every week. Exactly. We do sure. this. We have it through a month of subscription right now. So I, I agree. Completely. Fantastic. That's awesome. What's the website that the people can check it out and support you? Yes, sir. It's a clean dash service.com. So it's C L E A N E D dash service.com. Cleaned dash service.com. 
Com. Josh, thanks so much for being on here. Thank you for uh, for what you're doing for uh, Liberty and just for entrepreneurship and uh, kingdom entrepreneurship around the world. Thanks for being on Courageous Entrepreneur Radio today. Greatly appreciate it. My pleasure. All right, it's time now for our hot list hit list. This is my week of uh, you know the corporate sinners and saints, and there are there are some of both. Man alive, the Saudis are just they. You know when will humanity learn? That the, the 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 sin is not just the sin. It's the the problem is not the problem. The problem is in the cover up, you know. And Proverbs even says that people who who cover their sin won't prosper. It's like when you cover up, it's not what happens. It's how you handle it. And I say this over and over and over. Think Martha Stewart here. It wasn't the trade. It's the it's the lying to the FBI. It's the cover up afterwards. It's the no, I didn't. And yes, you actually did. It's always in the cover up. And that's what the Saudis did. They even brought in a, a body double. Uh, and they, I mean, they thought they had it so planned out that they were so confident to, to stand behind their crafted story. And it still blew up in their face. So it just proves it doesn't matter if you have the wealth of, a, of Saudi kings and old princes, you cannot cheat this principle. You cannot be successful. He who covers this and or in your, you know, will not prosper. So uh, if, if we start businesses to prosper, so listen, entrepreneurs, I don't care what you believe, the cover-up is going to cause you to not prosper. Be honest. Be a person of integrity. Own it. Whatever it is, it's you. Now, if you want to fix you, then work, fine, work on you, get better. But it doesn't change where you are. And so we grow companies to prosper. And something, it's always something usually small and seems insignificant. But when you start to cover it up, it becomes a big problem. Second company that's on my hot, uh, my uh, my hit list actually is Etsy. Etsy, I know, don't shoot me, all of you people who love to do crafts and things like that. But I got to tell you, they are not innovating, and it's it's driving me crazy. They have such a unique niche. They have a unique marketplace. It's kind of like Care.com. I mean, you they're they're an online farmers market. They're the place that the handmade craftsmen and the artists can sell their goods and services to a global marketplace and you are becoming irrelevant for a number of reasons. The, the, the platform is stale uh, you can, and you cannot live off do-it-yourselfers forever. I want to see some innovation there. Your popularity has declined significantly and you've got more competition than ever before. Amazon's after you. Uh, they're coming after those, those individuals, not just the big companies and brands anymore. Amazon wants your customers and they're going to win if you don't innovate and change the rules. Shopify, same thing. And they're making it friendlier and easier for your sellers uh, and they'll get a much larger audience. My hot list for this week, Liberty University. I'm just so thankful for them. I broadcast my radio program live from their campus a couple weeks ago. It's a huge success. They're wonderful hosts. You wouldn't believe it. I mean, we got to see, not only is it a beautiful part of the, 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 the country, but uh, we got to see the the, the tour uh, had a had a great suite for the for the football game. They actually play Auburn here in a couple of weeks at Auburn. Got to tour, uh, you know, the School of Business and Entrepreneurship is going to be opening. Got a School of Law, a School of Aeronautics. That was fun because I'm a pilot and I love to fly. Uh, the School of Law, School of Medicine, Physics and uh, Forensic Science Department. So that was a lot of fun getting to go and uh, seeing the most some of the most state of the art equipment in the country. And I want to thank my hosts Jeff and Christy Murphy, their family, Chris Carroll, Dr. Falwell. Uh, for your graciousness. Uh, my second, though, on my hot list, who uh, who, who really went above and beyond, Barnes & Noble. I, I, I can't believe Barnes & Noble made my hot list, but I'm telling you, it's not because you guys are so amazing. It is because you had one particular person, a general manager, uh, uh, there on the college campus that Barnes & Noble runs their the, the university bookstore, and he actually took the time to review my social media, see what kind of brands I wore, what kind of material I wore, to know what kind of branded shirts and clothing that I would wear. That's the kind of leaders that you need, Barnes & Noble, and that's what's going to keep you relevant. And so I thought that was brilliant. Uh, and I want to give him a shout out as well. Stephen Malaki, thank you so much for uh, taking the interest and for your heart in what you're doing, pouring into entrepreneurs. And in and, and Barnes & Noble, I will also say this, great job partnering with universities on this. They don't do what you do best. And you focused on that and you've partnered with them. And I think that it's a great thing uh, what you're doing. Uh, also, my third company on the hot list this week is Win Experiences. Win, it's spelled W-Y-N. If you go to winexperiences.com, they provide white glove, over-the-top experiences for your best clients and prospects. I'm talking about Millionaire's Row at the Kentucky Derby, 50-yard line at the Super Bowl, uh, Final Four, the Masters. They create these concierge experiences that are unparalleled, unmatched. 
And, you know, I used services like this whenever our, I was uh, growing the software company, the technology company, and uh, we would take them. Uh, UPS has used it on me before, and it works uh, because you take somebody, and, and so it's a great time. And uh, But people that you will not get in front of, prospects, clients, uh, all you got to do is take them to something like this, and, uh, and they absolutely, uh, you, you'll get the FaceTime that you're looking for. And one of the interesting things is, uh, you know, even down to the chocolates on the pillow or they rent a mansion and, and you, you can bring everybody in the same place or maybe it's a chopper, you know, a helicopter picking you up and taking you back and they already have the all-access passes. It's just a concierge experience that you don't have to plan uh, to be able to wine and dine your clients. Uh, it's also, uh, you know, one of the, it's all about relationships. It comes down to relationships. It's, it's why I do the CEO cruise uh, the way I do because of that. So, uh, and Twitter, Twitter, you've got to you've got to really focus because you're you're dropping off. Sales growth is way down. Uh, you're heading the way of Google Plus if you don't if you don't uh, uh, head uh, you know do something. And also the the way that uh, MySpace really did, uh, they and they tried to follow to the uh, to the music crowd and and uh, but but Twitter is starting to struggle. Uh, two questions, people: What problem do you have? And who owns that problem? Uh, join me on my next all inclusive three day two night faith based CEO cruise. It's February fifteenth through the seventeenth. And uh, it's only $1.99 per person for the next, I think, week or two. And then it goes to $2.99 from there on out per person based on double occupancy. And uh, you can reserve your cabin at CEOcruise.com. I'm also filling the Kasarani Stadium with 30,000 people in Nairobi, Kenya on May 10th, 2019. If you know about anybody in Africa or you want to go, I'll be taking an entourage from the United States. Uh, you can check that out at CourageousGlobal.com. You'll be with the government, business leaders, so forth. It'll be a great time. I'm also on the board of directors for the Guys With Ties, and we're throwing a Hope for the Holidays charity event on December 1st at Eve Orlando from 9 to 11 p.m. We've got about five VIP tables. You can register. Tickets are $25 at GuysWithTies.org. We also have some very unique investments coming into us. If you're interested in any of those, ranging from $25,000 to $400,000, email us at office at CourageousExperience.com. I'll be taking your calls, growing your businesses, and creating breakthroughs next Thursday again. Thanks to my sponsors, New York Life, Nick McCarthy, Win Experiences, and Tom Coast Tavern. Check them out at CourageousRadio.com. You've been listening to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio. I'm Dr. Roland Roberts, encouraging you to live your faith in business. Have a great week. You've been listening to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio with America's CEO, Dr. Roland Roberts. We pour time-tested business principles into hundreds of thousands of entrepreneurs every week, and we could not do it without your sacrificial giving. If you want to engage Dr. Roberts to speak or work with your organization, connect with us at CourageousRadio.com or at Courageous Media on Facebook. Join us next week as Dr. Roland Roberts shapes the lives and businesses of entrepreneurs the world over. Hey, thanks everybody for joining me on Courageous Entrepreneur Radio this week. I hope you enjoyed it. I had a great time. Oh, I'm calling somebody. That's interesting. Uh, so anyway, hope all is well and uh, hope you enjoyed today's program and broadcast. Once again, you can email us at officercourageousexperience.com for any questions and make sure you plan on calling in next Thursday at 407-916-5400 with any questions or about your product or service or business. Thanks again for joining us this week. We'll see you next week.